Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. There are two definitions to consider regarding the word coming. The first is the Greek transliteration, erkomai meaning to come or go, in a great variety of applications, literal or figurative. Since this word suggests a back and forth, it must be defined by the context in which it is used. According to the Englishman's Concordance, this word is found 632 times in the King James New Testament. Our second definition is the Greek transliteration parousia, which means a being near, that is, advent translated twice as presence. This word is used just 24 times in the King James New Testament. As noted, it is used in all three of our beginning passages. The spiritual meaning of 24 is priesthood. This is also two twelves, which indicates a double witness of governmental perfection and divine authority. This agrees with the idea of a spiritual priesthood and with 1 Peter 2.5. As mentioned, whenever we see our word erkomai, it must be defined by the context. However, when we see the word parousia, it speaks of presence. As for the phrase, son of man, have you ever wondered why Jesus referred to himself as such as opposed to son of God? In fact, we read in Matthew 16, 20, following Peter's revelation of Christ as the Son of the living God, that he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Intriguing, is it not? According to my Bible software, the phrase Son of Man is used a total of 108 times in the King James Old Testament, 93 in respect to Ezekiel, who was a priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chibar, and the hand of the Lord was upon him in there. At BibleNumbersForLife.com, Mark Lane cites 93 as might of God. In the King James New Testament, our phrase Son of Man is used 88 times. In his book, The Biblical Meaning of Numbers from 1 to 40, Dr. Stephen Jones states that eight is the number of new beginning. Mark Lane cites 88 as meaning righteous afflicted. In 88, we have two eights, and two is the number of a double witness. So in two eights, we have a double witness of a new beginning. Also of note, two eights equals 16, which just happens to be the number of love. Not surprisingly, Every instance of the phrase Son of Man regards the Lord Jesus Christ with 84 of these in the four Gospels. Mark Lane cites 84 as court of the Lord. The first occurrence of the phrase Son of Man is found in Numbers 23:19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said? and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? According to the Strong's Concordance, our phrase son of man is derived from two words. The first meaning, a son, as a builder of the family name. And the second? This is the Hebrew transliteration, Adam, 
defined as ruddy, that is, a human being. An individual or the species, mankind, etc. We should recognize this word, for it's used in the early records of Genesis regarding the creation of mankind. In the New Testament, the phrase son of man is derived from the words meaning a son and a human being. The New Testament definition agrees with the old. The most obvious characteristic of the phrase son of man would be its ties to humanity as opposed to divinity. Through Mary, Christ was a son of man, but through the heavenly father, Christ was the son of God. So why the apparent difference? Why did the Lord emphasize his position as son of man and not son of God? We might be able to pass over this idea if it were not for the fact that the Lord himself used this phrase quite openly and consistently. Might there be a difference between his coming as the son of man and his coming as the Lord Jesus Christ? Might the first suggest something that precedes the second? I believe it does. I believe it's also important to note that Son of Man has both an individual and collective perspective which needs to be considered. In our next study, we will begin our examination.